ICS Indian Civil Service IAS Indian Administrative Service if you search for IAS then IAS is a government service that started post independence IAS Indian Administrative Service okay but if you search for ICS it will come as Indian Civil Service or Indian Imperial Imperial Civil Service okay so it is like same thing with two different names in now also in India people call IAS as civil service so civil services but actually there is nothing called civil service it is administrative service Indian administrative service okay prior to 1947 this was called as imperial civil service or Indian civil service what is imperial civil services for which the counterpart is Indian administrative service okay so what Indian administrative service nowadays it do, the, the, the way the name is administrative service means it is kind of responsible for doing the administration like district collector or district magistrate DM or DC so DC collector collector Babu is very famous in India so district collector or district magistrate so these kind of posts are in the center uh, secretaries they sit for various departments so these kind of uh, uh, roles they are considered as the the most powerful pillar or the pillars in the Indian democracy as far as bureaucracy is concerned so when bureaucratic system comes so this is the highest or the most powerful the highest density job that is Indian administrative service so Indian administrative service, more or less it takes control when election comes so there is a responsibility for Indian administrative service okay through which only the election commission happens uh, constituted so they takes care of the elections also so it is kind of you can say parallel government if government is there then they are the pillars in the government if government is not there they only go for the government election or something like that okay so the whatever we are seeing mirror as ias actually prior to the independence same post district collector existed and name was indian civil service that name is still persists in people civil service so what is civil service so indian civil services or imperial civil services was an administrative job that was in east india company so east india company that started in 17th means in 18th century so in 17th east india company so east india company it was not mere merchants so they controlled the indian territory they they fought many battles okay i believe battle of palasi and so many our so they controlled full india including uh, karnataka that is uh, uh, tipu sultan defeating tipu sultan or killing tipu sultan so east india company took over administrative means they were collecting taxes also so they took over india from the mughals and that so there the administrative job the people like uh, kind of uh, uh, govern uh, means uh, lieutenants and their uh, kind of uh, marshals so the people who were at high rank in uh, administration so they were appointed as indian civil imperial civil service so there are three kind of job that east india company they constituted so one is imperial job means central job people looking at, from the central perspective one was provincial civil service in the province they were allocated one was subordinate civil service so subordinate subordinate civil services means people were responsible for collecting the revenue and maintaining the law and order otherwise provincial civil services pcs and ics imperial civil service so these are the concept from the east indian 
so east india company to control the indian territory they had imperial civil service now in 1853 british raj british government they took over from the east india company now we will collect the tax so in that case then ics employee they became employee of british company in 1853 after that many amendments came okay so but in 1853 the ics imperial civil service so that was completely separate from the provincial and subordinate civil service so only one term came after that that was imperial civil service imperial civil services now this became part of british raj british gone not in the east india company in 1853 1858 post the rebellion mutiny in the indian army okay so post that so in 1858 when they curb or control the rebellion so 1858 that as ics imperial civil services became indian civil service and they started conducting examination okay so there was examination now written exam so you have to pass so the examination used to happen in london in london one and britishers they were kind of aspirants to work in india as administrator okay so they were taking part it was difficult exam so ics indian civil service or imperial civil service now it started happening people were getting only through examination but horse riding was mandatory so you have to know horse riding so this tradition would have come from the east indian people because they were fighters they were fighting in the battle and they were winning the battle so so in so i would rather say that british raj british government they added written test also along with the muscle power that is horse riding so you have to know horse riding and then written examination also you have to so once you pass through the ics examination that is very difficult then you have to go for one year training a probation period there you will learn law law and uh, many other thing revenue collection and those kind of thing administration and then you will learn because your provinces so india there were many provinces as far as britishers were concerned like north west province sindh province bombay province like this so which province you have got through ics that province local language also were taught okay dress code and those things means you will get full one year training in the ics once you pass the ics in england in various institutes okay i believe uh, kind of oxford and these colleges you will get one year training so that is the scenario so many amendments happened after that so those people they used to come to india and they then they were kind of were working as civil service employee very high post so now in india the judiciary system that was controlled by british so judiciary system 50% seats in judiciary system like more or less in course manner you can understand as the judges the district judge or session judge so 50% of the seats were filled from the ic 50% from the judiciary examination 50% from the ic so person who was ic he was knowing all the law so what is the main function of the ic employee civil service employee in the india so they were responsible for revenue collection enforcement of the law administration then uh, coordinating the various departments like education department health department so those coordination they were also doing the biggest thing was that they were in between or mediator between the british government and the indian people so indian people and british government civil servants were mediator so that was their main job and 50% of the judiciary they were filled by the civil service. so judges were also there session court judge, uh, i mean the district judge session court judge and then state level judges so they were also filled through i i believe william william bedernberg he was civil service he became two time indian national congress president 
for the Allahabad session. He was judge also for some duration. So there were uh, judges in Indian National Congress who became president in Indian National Congress. So they were civil servants. It's another surprising thing that person who is appointed from British government, he came to India and he established he becoming president of Indian National Congress who is responsible to be who is enemy of British, who is chasing the British and he they are presiding over as president and they are continuing in their job also they are getting salary and then once they return to England they are becoming member of parliament means they come to India as employee of British they remain employee of British while they are founding and becoming president of the enemy and then they are continuing their job and going back and becoming member of parliament how much Indian National Congress is enemy and how much they chase the British, you understand from this concept. Means how they are loyal to the British of Gong, these ICS people. Now, ICS people the, uh, saw many things and there are many amendments in ICS. And the biggest amendment that happened in ICS, that was in 1920. So in 1920, the ICS examination were also being conducted in New Delhi, I mean Delhi. There was no New Delhi, Delhi. So in Delhi, also ICS examination were happening and 50%, 40% of the, means half of the seat around were allocated to Indians. So it is something like this, 40% seat would go to Europeans, 40% seat would go to Indians and 20% seat would come from the PCS, Provincial Civil Service. That is different thing. So Provincial Civil Service means like BDO, Block Development Officer or SDO, Subdivision Development Officer. So that that is that is provincial civil service. It is still there as a state administrative examination everywhere. Okay, Uttar Pradesh or Bihar, everywhere you see the state level administration examination is happening. So that is PCS that happened in English time. Yes, it is a replica. Yes. It is a democratic system. So everything is same. Everything follow democratic science. So everything is same. Now from provincial civil service, 20% seat would be filled in the imperial civil service. 40% Indian and 40% European, 80% will be filled from the ICS examination, where examination would happen in Delhi also, also in addition to London. Indian can sit in the London examination also, Indian can sit in the Delhi examination, but higher posts generally were give, awarded to the European world lower post were given to India. I would say it is not discrimination because they were not that skilled. That's all. But now can you see the elite class, elite class in political scenario went to Indian National Congress and bureaucracy class in elite class went to ICS. So imperial civil services, the people who are good in the study, they went to imperial civil services, people who are good in politics, they went to Indian National Congress. Now you tell me, if that is the case, then who changed British? Your elite class is with Britishers. Okay? The people who are good in a study, they are dreaming to become civil service servants. And people who are good in politics, they are going to Indian National Congress. Then who changed the Britishers? You are following Britishers only. From the 1935, Indian National Congress people were chief ministers in the provincial state. As far as the election is concerned, which started in 1920. So 1920 is crucial time in a sense that buildings were, were ready, kind of parliament and presidential house and governor house or they were initiated uh, in the construction. So democracy, so Britishers were in a phase to transfer the power, so in a phase to build a democratic structure in India. That's why 1920 election started. In 1920, ICS examination started in India and 50% seat were filled up by Indians. So, Indian National Congress and then Parliament and Presidential Houses are getting built up and then election started happening. In ICS, 50% seats were from India. This proved that the shift of power were kind of being transferred to India, but they have to follow what structure Britishers have set as democratic system. Certainly, this is not a home rule. Home rule means the chairs 
in the democratic system what Britishers have said that chairs will be filled by means I would not say black Indian means with the kind of brown Indian. So that is the scenario. So that is the so whatever the kind of the design is as per the design Britishers they started changing. So now in 1920 50 percent Indian. So 50 percent Indian in a sense that Muslim Hindu they were given different categories. So everyone was filled. Okay, so in judiciary system ICS came and in administrative system ICS came. Their main job was collection of revenue. Okay, and different amendments also happened. So now in 1947, when Britishers they they did not push the way, rather when they were doing the power of uh, transfer of the power to the Indians, whatever the structure they have built. Uh, parliament and assembly houses and election also has started 30 years prior to that when everything was built and the chairs were given to Indians at that time around 1000 civil servants were available in the India okay out of 1000 there were few that were through reserved category also there were more than half were Europeans but there were few from the SCST reserved category. So SCST reservation started in 1931 in the government job. Everything, government job, SCST reservation, everything is prior to 1947 only. So there are few ICS officers, they are SCST. They, they came to the post because of the reservation that was given to them. Now, anyone would ask then what Bhim Rao Ambedkar did as far as SCST is concerned. SCST Act, SCST Act came in 1930s one. Okay, so SCST reservation, what Bhim Rao Ambedkar people think that they, he has given in the constitution that came 20 years back only from the Britishers only. What he did, if anyone would ask, I would suggest that take a kind of a telephone. Okay, take a telephone and call the soul of uh, Bhim Rao Ambedkar and ask. Okay, what he actually did as far as SCST reservation in the government job is concerned because it was available. He would have done other thing also. I am not uh, kind of uh, uh, saying anything wrong about any person. But we cannot deviate from the truth. That is the idea of the discussion. Okay, giving prestige to anyone doesn't mean that we deviate from the truth okay so so that is the scenario so SCST reservation act was passed in 1931 so these people were there now when independence happened 1940 I mean independence so Indian National Congress changed British and when independence happened then to Europeans ICS Europeans then options were given to them they can stay in India so all Europeans would stay in India and continue with their job. But no job instead of imperial civil service, job is renamed to Indian administrative service. Okay, imperial civil service, the main focus was colonial rule. Okay, the focus was colonial rule. Means revenue collection, law enforcement and administration. So law enforcement and Colonial rule, uh, tax collection, land tax collection, revenue collection, that was cut down. Only administration remained because, because means it's an Indian government, right? So they could not uh, control the Indian people in harsh manner the way Britishers used to do because they had to collect the money. They were money grabbers. So revenue collection and law enforcement part was eradicated. Only administration part came as far as the theory is concerned. So ICS became IAS, Imperial Civil Service became or Indian Civil Service became Indian Administrative Service because the colonial part, colonial rule part was taken away, only the administration part was, was there. So the district collector whose main job is collection, collection of revenue, the ta land taxes, district collector revenue collector at district level okay he became district magistrate so district collector he no more is a tax collector he is a magistrate means he will do the administrative job 
so that change was made name change why i am saying only name change because britishers were allowed to work completely the way they are working as judges in the courts and uh, district collectors they can continue because all the district subdivision and division and state everything is same parliament house assembly house governor and uh, i won't say prime minister <laughs> but chief minister everything is same because election happened in 1952 whereas the the kind of independence we received in 1947 they were lieutenant governor vice royal and everything okay so the ics in british time it was uh, controlled under secretary of the state it's the post name as secretary of the state that is a, that was part of the uh, british kind of uh, parliament so that person would so they would report to the secretary of state of the india so that is was the hierarchy now here similar some they would have found something they have to sit in, in delhi and they have to report to them now but most britishers they left to their country and they joined similar what is the counter of the civil service in the britain because everything is replica right british parliament to british democratic system full replica is in india now. so whatever the original stuff in england so they joined there so most of them they left but few of them they stayed here so i have those details and they worked as a judge so they retired in 1960 or something like that british so if judges are doing the kind of judgment based upon some principle same principle is continuing right what is independence day? when britishers were ruling india with some set of rules that judges were following as far as jurisdiction jurisdiction is concerned jurisdiction is concerned okay as far as judgment is concerned whatever the rule and regulation they were reading they were following if they are continuing then they are following the same rule and regulation right so if and full britishers were given option to continue if full britishers administration is continuing in india then what is meaning of independence how they change meaning i don't know. if they are continuing then they are continuing with the same rule and regulation that were imposed on the indian prior to the independence they will rule, read the same judgment from the same book in the court civil servant they will follow the same rule and regulation they were doing earlier okay and few they stayed in india then what system changed in 1947 i don't understand chief minister everything is same district collector and judge they are reading same book same english everything is same these are bluff must this indian national congress i am following mathematics mathematics follows so whatever you have set of data from the set of data we prepare a formula a model okay from that model we talk about so whatever we saw now with that model it looks like that there is no change if there is no change then one side they were with the british and other side they are with the people to so people we are they are saying we chase british to british they are saying that we are following you only thing is that you were sitting on the chair we are sitting here but anyway they gave option to the ics people to sit continue sitting on the chair only the at the ministerial and those kind of places election when they would sit so there they change otherwise ics you can continue with the same rule there is nothing change in the rule and regulation everything would continue like this don't worry okay so i have few data that i will share okay so first so there were amendments so that happened in the kind of uh, uh, ics so uh, there are few amendments in ics that happened uh, the amendments is reforms we can say charter act 1850 so in that act the britishers government they took over from the east india company then alkesian commission was set up in 1886 okay then my then montford reform happened in 1990 that i am saying 1920 then lee commission happened in 1924 then government of india act came in 1935 that government of india act 1935 i believe sc st reservation would have been included now when in 1947 okay 
there were 980 ICS officers were there. Out of which 468 were European, 352 were Hin Indian Hindu, 101 Muslim, two two scheduled two uh, scheduled card SC, five domicile domicile European and Anglo Indians, and 25 Indian Christians. Okay, that were also there. Okay, 13 Parsi, 10 okay 10 sikh and four other so sc sc st act was there now if i see the what people in from the ics when they were coming from england to india what they were doing so there were three jobs mainly central government job court system judiciary system and state government job same thing now so at central government secretary to the government of india secretary to the government of india everything was there Joint Secretary to the Government of India, Deputy Secretary, Additional Deputy Secretary, okay, Under Secretary, Assistant Secretary of Government of India. These are the these are the Imperial Central Job. In the Court, Judge of State High Court, Judge of District Judge, District Judge, District Court, and in State level, Chief of Secretary, okay, Secretary to the State Government. Divisional Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner is also District Collector, Assistant Commissioner. Okay, what District Collector does is responsible for law and order. He focuses on revenue collection and revenue collection, and then he is overseeing and coordinating various departments. Okay. Now, okay. Now he also serves as election office. The election started much prior. Registrar, marriage officer, licensing authority, and managing disaster response. So this is the power of role of a district collector. Now who continued? The two famous person post 1947 they continued in India only. ICS people. Donald Hall Shaw, ICS 1928 batch, and he retired as Chief Justice of Punjab Haryana High Court. Okay, so. That is Donald Bar. So there is another called Justice William Broom, 1932 district, 1932 IS officer, ICS officer, and at the, 1947 he was district and session judge, and in 1972 March he retired as High Court Judge, Allahabad Judge, Allahabad Court, High Court. So these are the famous kind of the uh, ICS people. So these are the few data. So that I wanted to share. Now you tell me one thing: SC ST Act, SC ST Act to ICS to IAS conversion, and then Indian Parliament Party that is in that was in England to Indian National Congress conversion. Where is independence? Independence is there. Means half of the India became foreign. Okay, so people who were going to do the trade. Like Tibet or Kashi region or Burma or now Bangladesh or Bhutan or Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, everywhere they created borders. Now you cannot go. Okay, resulting into high rise in population, high rise in empty stomach, okay, no food, and then high rise in unemployment. Okay, now you go and vote and think what you have to do. Okay. So, home rule, this is home rule and this is democratic system. If this is democratic system and this is home rule, then what is anti-democratic system and what is foreign rule? 